Let's bring in Rudy Giuliani. He was mayor 19 years ago. He's also personal attorney for President Trump and the host of Rudy's Common Sense on YouTube. Rudy, good morning to you. Good morning. You know, we, we're How just. Uh, we're doing okay, trying to put it all in perspective during an election year. You know, sure. um, Mark was just talking about the politics going on, uh, but 19 years ago uh, was primary election day for the mayor here in New York City. It was. It That's had right. To, it had to be postponed because of the tragedy. But at the same time, after the smoke cleared, it was very clear that the country was united. And that was a great thing. Fast forward to today, the country could not be more divided. Well, maybe the difference was that we were at the beginning of a presidential term. We weren't, in a, you know, we weren't two months from an election. Election years always bring out the worst in everybody, I think. Uh, and frankly, I think we, were, we, we weren't quite as partisan and we weren't quite as divided into two, into two camps as we, are, as we are today. So it was a little bit easier for us to come together. And there was more of a feeling of general patriotism then. Uh, that percentage of people that feel that are, is down. I mean, we didn't have people taking a knee in those days to the national anthem or people burning burning flags. That had, that had been in the 70s and the 80s. We were long past that. So uh, it was pretty easy to summon up patriotism. You weren't having this kind of hate America movement going on that was countering it. Uh, I, remember, I remember driving along with President Bush the day that he made that speech that I think... Uh, Pete just mentioned where he said, you'll hear from us. Yeah. Right after it was over, we got into a car. We drove up the west end of Manhattan, and all these people were cheering for him. We love you, George. We love you. We love you. And I leaned over to him, Governor Pataki, and I said, you know, none of these people voted for us. Not a single one. <laughs> these are all Democrats. The west side of Manhattan is solid Democrat, but they love you now. Yeah. And they did. And, and that lasted for some time. I mean, that ended, too, maybe six months later. But... We got through those six months with you know, the kind of unity we needed yeah. so that we defeated, the, we, we defeated the terrorists. I mean, they killed 2,790 or so people that day and then more after. They wanted to defeat us. They wanted to defeat America. And the firefighters, and I emphasize the police officers, saved us by being so brave that the next day's story was as much about their bravery as about the evil of the Islamic uh, extremist terrorists. They prevailed. They, the Islamic extremist terrorists did not achieve what they wanted to achieve, which was to break the spirit of America and destroy our way of life. In fact, it was reinforced. And I believe the thing that turned that around was the bravery of those uniformed officers. So, Rudy, you mentioned the story about uh, Governor Pataki and being with uh, President Bush. Tell us about that day <laughs> when you found out that morning and walk us through the timeline, because we're seeing some video. We've been seeing some video throughout your interview of you down there. Well, I was at a breakfast at the Peninsula Hotel. It was supposed to be an easy day because it was primary day. Thought we weren't going to have any work until the afternoon when they started complaining about cheating. Somebody always will, right? So. I was having a kind of political breakfast with Bill Simon, who was running for governor of California, and was one of my close friends, and Denny Young, who's my counsel forever, and a rock that day. And uh, all of a sudden, I was told a twin-engine plane hit the North Tower. I walked out. I saw a beautiful day, and I said, it can't be an accident. And then when the second plane hit, Bernie Carrick called me. Oh, I was about a, I was about a minute away. Saw an explosion. Bernie's on the phone. He said, boss... This is, this is an attack. And we knew who it was. I mean, we knew it was Islamic terrorists. We knew exactly who it was, actually, because we had been threatened with attack and had attacks that we thwarted. I mean, we had, had an attack in 93. We thwarted two or three in between. We almost canceled the 2000 celebration because of terrorist threats from bin Laden. Uh, so we immediately knew who it was. Right. And we knew, we knew we were at war. This had to be a war. I mean, we had George Bush as president. We knew he was not going to take this, uh, you know, and just kind of smile and bomb a field somewhere. There's so much that you just said that is so uh, applicable to today. Number one, you heard about an attack, and you didn't call a press conference to panic people. What, did you lie to them? I don't think so. Number two, George Bush, we weren't even thinking about al-Qaeda. Gore and Bush were debating three times. It never came up. Blindsided, almost like the pandemic came out of left field. You could say that. And number two, number three, 
is Governor Pataki was secure enough to say, okay, Rudy City, I'm the governor. He wasn't saying, give me a press conference. I want the spotlight. Rudy, how can I help? Yeah, technically he's in charge. But he saw that you were in charge of the city and he put his ego to the side. What a difference it is from today. Wow. Yeah, well, I got to tell you, George is, uh, I mean, I love George and we were close, but not that close. And from then on, we're like brothers. I mean, we lived together for two months. We had all our staff meet, and we did something really extraordinary. I'd have a staff meeting every morning in New York, and he'd have one in Albany. He brought a staff meeting from Albany down to New York. And every day, we put our staffs together. And we did it for a very simple reason. We knew that we could make decisions quickly and in the best interest. But then, look, our staffs are going to fight. <laughs> they always do. So George and I said, our staffs are going to be together. We're mm -hmm. going to walk out of the room with one decision. And frankly, the reason George, to the extent he did defer to me, did, is because the mayor knows the city much better than the governor. The governor knows the whole state, but he's not, he can't know exactly the resources we have in Far Rockaway or Staten Island or the upper part of the Bronx. Or he, he, he wouldn't have known the 135 major targets. And, and also, I particularly had a background as a prosecutor of terrorism. And Bernie Kerrick had a background as an investigator of terrorism. So we were in an area of strength as opposed to something like the pandemic where sure. nobody knew anything about this virus. It was a big surprise. It was a big shock. It was the most shocking experience of my life. But it was an experience I was prepared for, I'd say, almost all my life. And so yeah. was Bernie, by you know, the things we did in, in, in the past. Um, Mr. Mayor, you, you talk about the heroism of the New York City Police Department and Fire Department, who lost 343 19 years ago today when the, the towers collapsed. But in addition, think about the heroism of everyday Americans who watched what happened. Of course. And then walked into recruiting stations. And they said, you know what? I, I got to help. And, you know, they left their safe places all around the United States of America and went into danger to try to save the country. Well, you know, I, I, I don't mean to leave them out. I just just emphasizing the police officers today because Indeed. of what they've been through. But I mean, the civilians really amaze me. I heard so many stories of people I'm never going to know. You know, uh, a man, an older man who let four groups of people get on an elevator and there was an elevator and there was no more room. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm 73. I've already lived my life. You, you guys go down. I'll be mm. OK. And of course, he wasn't OK. Uh, there's the director of security of of uh, Morgan Stanley, who saved all but four lives, hundreds of lives, hundreds of lives. So, I mean, there are many, many stories of people, some we know, some we don't know. Uh, the firefighters, the police officers represent that. Mm -hmm. But the other thing they represent is those people did it like that, and that's remarkable. Those men do it every day. Those men and women do it every day, every night. And when one of them dies, Every single one of them throughout the country, all 800,000 families say to themselves, it could happen to me. Right. So they deserve special respect. And Mr. Mayor, Bernie that's said a, to me yeah. that night, Mr. Bernie said to me ahead. that night, you know, it's a shame we have to go through this so they learn what we do. Well, please remember what they do, please. And that's my point. We remember people wearing those hats, tourists coming in to get an NYPD or an FDNY hat. It seemed like yesterday, but now it's just the opposite. People, uh, these, these uh, men and women in blue, don't even wear their uniforms to work. They got a billion dollars cut out of their budget. They're told their, their counter crime unit, uh, their anti crime unit should not exist. And this, 19 years later, we, it seems like a different country. Well, don't you, uh, I mean, don't they realize that the Islamic extremist terrorists are still around yes. <laughs> in great force. The Islamic Republic of Iran gives them hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Some of that was money that came from, I'm sorry, Obama. And uh, they, want, they, they want to attack us again. And they, they feed off weakness. They can smell weakness. This is the time. Can you imagine the weakness we are showing them now? Yep. Can you imagine? We're defunding the police department that has the best anti-terrorism unit in the world. And that was built by my successor, Bloomberg and Kelly. I started it, but they quadrupled it. You know, so many lives were changed. All of our lives were. But you talk about the story of that 73-year-old man. That's how old my dad is. And I think about he didn't get to see his grandkids grow up. And he, his kids were probably just having grandkids. 
you know, lives were, I mean, those terrorists, they just took away so much from dinner tables at Christmas and um, Easter celebrations and every holiday, and it's just changed all of our lives. But our thoughts and our prayers are with those families today, with the heroes that have fought for our country, and with you, Mr. Mayor, thanks for everything you've done for this city. And I know you're going to be posting a special September 11th message on rudyscommonsense.com. That's going to happen today, 6 p.m. Eastern time, if you want to watch that. Thanks, Mr. Mayor.